NASA's moon base, canceled. The Orion six-person crew module, also canceled. ESA moves forward with Vega, and STS-125's getting ready to launch. All that and a whole lot more coming up on this May 1st edition of Space Vidcast Live. Some of those stories are true. My name is Benjamin Higginbotham. With me is beautiful, lovely, wonderful, talented, incredibly intelligent Carrie Ann Higginbotham. We are the Space Vidcasters, and I did that in one breath. Ooh, you, you were ready for that, weren't you? <laughs> Bing! <laughs> wow, we just got a lot of viewers. Look at that! <laughs> Welcome to the show. Uh, you know, we may have been a little overdramatic in the coming ups, just to get your attention. <laughs> just, just a pinch. First of all, just a... you know us. I mean, come on. Anytime Ben can repeat something as well, <laughs> it just makes it that much better. It was so, awesome. yes, Jeff, exactly. Whatever it Whatever takes. Whatever it takes. All right, so uh, we'll get to the uh, space news in a minute. But first, a uh, couple housekeeping things. Mm -hmm. We've been doing housekeeping all week in our podcasts. And you can join our podcast live by following us on Twitter at twitter.com slash space vidcast. Yep. And we had a series of really great shows. We had a call-in show and the entire community participated live and we recorded that. And I thought it was a, a lot of fun. Yeah. Quality was a little lower than we normally do, but it was it was quite awesome. Right, but that's not due to anyone who was speaking. Uh, that was just Well, except for maybe Jeff. Maybe, maybe Jeff. No, that was just happens to be due to the client we were using. It had nothing to do with anyone who was joining us. So that is, if you want to participate live in these conversations and, you know, learn a little bit, give your opinion, you know, space newbie or space expert, it doesn't matter. You know, just participate. It's, it's a lot of fun. It's a great community. I think it's, I think it's awesome. So certainly do that. We're, we're going to try to, I think we're going to try to normally schedule those on like Saturday nights or Sunday nights or something like right. that. So I, I'm pretty sure we'll let, we'll, and they'll we'll probably lock in there. start relatively late and then we'll probably go really late as well. Yeah. Uh, we like to do them uh, as many at a time. We do four at a time so we have enough for the entire week and then this is the fifth show. So like this last one went to at least three o'clock in the morning our time. But it was awesome. It was, it was, it was hardcore awesome. Oh yeah. Uh, the other, other housekeeping items, we're trying to make it to ISDC 2009 so we can bring you live coverage of the conference which means you need to help pay for it. And you can do that. I made this as easy as possible because everyone gets, you know, it's like, oh, I don't know what buttons to press. So here's what you do. You do what Google Lunar X Prize did. Thank you, GLXP, for doing this. You go to spacevidcast.com, and on the right-hand side, right-hand side of this website, there's a big button that says Give. Help us out just a little bit. Every dollar helps. Five bucks, you know, ten bucks. This way, right-hand side. Right-hand right side. There. Right over it's here. It's over here. Like right, right there. there. Uh, it, <laughs> it really is too. I know. Um, <laughs> the, uh, um, <laughs> what this will go to is helping helping us make it to ISDC 2009, the mm -hmm. International Space Development Conference, or Developers Conference. And we're going to bring you live coverage of the show. We'll bring you live coverage of certainly the track that we're going to try to host. Yes. As well as hopefully as much stuff as we can. Now, I can't guarantee anything because we don't know what we're going to be able to cover. But I can say Buzz Aldrin will be there. Yes. Now, um, it's my he's, hope he's to be able to get... He's a talk over a lunch. Um, there's actually quite a lot of people that you would want to see that are going to be there and mm -hmm. be speaking. Um, Elon Musk, along with our very good friend, Will Pomerantz. Um, we're trying to get... Well, hang on. He's our good friend right now, so long as Mike he gets to go. Mike Fabio go to ISDC. Now, if Mike doesn't get to go, William's friend status gets reduced oh, by I won't even talk one about him full then. notch. It'll be like, mm -hmm. yeah, there's Elon Musk and Buzz Aldrin yeah. and all these other cool people and not Will Pomerantz. This, this William guy, we don't know I what he does, but... Phew. Guy, mm -hmm. yeah. So there you go. It's on, people. So help us out there. Certainly, it's just like five bucks. If we get, here's the thing. We get about, depends on the show, anywhere between 20,000 and 100,000 viewers. Right. If, what is it, 500 of them donate $5, mm -hmm. that's all we need to do the whole show and off we go. Actually, I think if 500 of them donate $2, right. we're, we're pretty and much And don't set. think that we are just doing this, um, you know, because we're just trying to get you guys to send it 
or you know give us money in order to go. No, we'll do um, that later. We're <laughs> We, of course, are putting as much effort into this as we possibly can. Um, there's a lot of stuff that I've been selling on eBay. Um, I think my plasma's next. <laughs> Pretty uh, much. <laughs> Notice there's not one behind us anymore. Hmm. <laughs> Telling sign. So we need to raise about $2,000 with the help of a bunch of great people. We've got a couple of silver supporters, uh, gold supporters as well. Well, with the help of all of them, uh, we are up to about $900, I think we're up to. Right. We're just under $1,000. So we need, a, we need to raise $1,100 dollars more in the next 15 days. So mm -hmm. please, uh, we'll, that's what we'll leave it at that. It's very easy to give. Go to spacevidcast.com, click on the give button right about there, and uh, that's all you that's all you need to do. All right, and um, what else do we have? Oh, uh, we were going to have a guest tonight. Yes. Yes. Um, Fred from Team Frednet, one of the GLXP teams, of course, which is probably why GLXP is in the room and probably very sadly disappointed at this very moment. Um, <laughs> Fred from Frednet was supposed to be with us. Um, unfortunately, he got a bout of, what was it, bronchitis? Yeah. And that's just not fun, uh, especially trying to talk with it. Uh, so we decided to reschedule that for another time. We don't know exactly when just yet. Uh, hopefully next week or sometime relatively soon. In the future. In the future. I yeah. mean, he's, he definitely will be on. It just it isn't this week. So uh, to some of you, I'm sure you're quitting right now. And to some of you... <laughs> and our audience has been cut in half. Just like that. They're like, well, we don't listen to these two. It's great because it's just more time with your good old Carrie Ann and Ben. But we do have some fantastic space news. So let's get this thing started right and start us off with some space news. He was on that. He was like ready. Did you see that? I know. That it was pointed like, and bam! bam! Just like that. All right, first off, NASA, well, this is the overly dramatic title. NASA can cancels the moon base. They haven't canceled anything. There was uh, one story we read that made it kind of sound like that. And we, when we dug a little bit deeper, uh, they're just downscaling it, right? Instead of a 20-story high-rise, they're going to build a five-story high-rise. And by high rise, I mean they're not building a high rise at all. Right. Uh, the first story it came out, at, you know, the congressional hearings are going on, and uh, there's a representative, Boring. yeah, representative Boring. from NASA who's there, who was giving a presentation, and he was kind of making some broad, very vague statements. And one of the things he said was something about like, you know, we're probably not going to get the moon base that we had planned on. Well, when you take that out of context, it sounds like we're not going to get a moon base. Right. Which is too That's bad because... That's not what he meant. The he moon base... It ain't going to be the one we wanted. Yeah, it had but a, we're going to have a moon base. It had a pool and a sauna. It was really nice. Which would have been awesome. No kidding. So it sounds like they're, they may need to scale back. And you know, a, a lot of... We actually brought this up in the podcast. Yes. This last week. A lot of what NASA is doing at this point, in order to make any reasonable timetable whatsoever... Mm -hmm. Uh, they're going to have to scale a lot of their Constellation program back. Right. The moon base is one of those things that they're just going to have to pull back. Yeah. And at least they're still going to the moon. Because at first I'm like, oh my goodness, we're not going to the moon. We're just going to skip the moon and go on to Mars. This is a bad idea. Well, you know, it, 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 it is a bad idea. But I, I think it's nice that, uh, that they're focusing on it a lot more. Because it almost felt like... All we were focusing on was getting back to the moon and kind of like nothing else. So like we had these moon blinders on, but uh, they're Minders. they're going to focus a little bit more on getting to Mars and uh, some near Earth asteroids as well, um, with manned missions to Mars and the near Earth mm -hmm. asteroids. I should specify, uh, and not just you know just the moon and you know making Trump Plaza over there. Oh my uh, gosh, it would be so awesome. <laughs> Huh. <laughs> Maybe Colbert Plaza. Anyway, yeah. so uh, it's, it's so yes, it's not nearly what it sounds like, but it's you know it's it kind of sucks. It's sort of a, a bad week for NASA in general. I don't know that it's necessarily bad. I, it's nice to it's nice to see there. Okay, I'm speaking out of both sides of my mouth. Of course, uh, it's nice to see them actually being a little bit more realistic because they had right. bitten off a whole lot more than they could chew. Right. And They're like, we're going to have people living up there by 2020, yeah. and I was like. Really? No. no, no, no. They just they they because they do a lot, right? I mean, NASA isn't just space. They're right. They're and a not bunch every of single stuff. one of those employees is working on the one. Let's get everybody to the moon, kind mm -hmm. of thing. You know, they're they're spread out. There's a lot of people doing a lot of stuff. So and their budget has never re never recouped since the Nixon administration went whack right. and killed it. So right. you know, trying to go back to the moon is a very difficult thing. It's very it's very dangerous. You know, the, so anyhow, it's nice to see them do that. On the other side, if I may speak on the other side of my face my face, my mouth, uh, exactly. So that was this side. Now this side over here, uh, 
it's a little bit disappointing because their plans weren't that ambitious. They were moderately ambitious, but I mean, we're not talking about anything where it's like, we can't do this. They've moved back to like Apollo era technology. Yeah, we, let's see, we went from never being to the moon to being the moon in what was it, seven years, eight, eight years? years? And we've got at least a decade now to get back and just and put somebody there to sit there for more than like a day or two. And we still and can't, we do can't it. seem to do that. Yep. Right on. So, I mean, I understand it's a different mission. I understand it's a lot harder. There are a lot of new variables. They're using actually kind of a totally different computer system. Um, it's, it's, they really are modernizing this whole thing. Is it really, Apple Lisa? It's, it is in Lisa. <laughs> They're modernizing the whole thing. By the way, two points for the Apple, the <laughs> Apple reference. Wow. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So um, it, it's a little bit disappointing. If they're going to be doing something like this, if they're really going to be delaying and having problems like this, I would expect a next generation vehicle that's really out there. Right. I mean, really. And we had a great discussion with Chris and Blair last week about this exact topic mm -hmm. in the post show. So mm -hmm. certainly watch us live because I'm not going to ever repeat that ever again. All right. Now, speaking of downsizes, they've also downsized, not canceled, but downsized the, Aru uh, the, Aruin, the Orion crew capsule. Yes. There, was, there are two sizes of the crew capsule, the small size mm -hmm. and supersized. We've got, it's like a number one with a Coke. <laughs> and, the, and the small crew capsule seats four and the large crew capsule seats six. And I believe that the large crew capsule was pretty much only intended for the ISS, just bringing up large crews to the International Space Station. The small crew capsule was what was going to bring us back to the moon. Um, yeah, no, they're going to they're gonna put that big crew capsule on the back burner for now. For politic reasons, money reasons, and weight reasons, they are scaling back on that. And, and any one of those aspects is understandable, but when they start to overlap like that, then it's really understandable. And I, I personally can't really fault them for that. Of course, this one over here probably will. No, I mean, well, it's interesting because uh, Corkspin brings up they took out the media not space in the. <laughs> <laughs> uh -oh. Don't worry. Oh, Blair. I'll get there. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, we'll, no, we're, we'll make it there well before NASA makes it there on Virgin Galactic or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> They'll have a new moon vehicle that, that will make it up there. The, uh, by the way, it's worth, it's worth pointing out. I'm sure someone in the chat said it and I missed it. They're not making it physically smaller, they're making it. Right. Uh, uh, they're just weight, modifying it so that there's only smaller. four humans allowed to be in the thing and, as opposed to six. Right. It's still a, what is a 5.2 meter... Something uh, like that. Uh, Radius? Diameter. Uh, yeah, well, I was trying... Uh, fairing. Thingy. Fairing. Thingy. What am I trying to say? Anyhow. Math is hard. Yeah, uh, numbers. <laughs> and uh, I, I believe that's that, that's all remaining the same. Uh, thank you for the, the link uh, on the Wikipedia. Thank you, Chris. Um, so it, it's it's just a scale back, right? You know, they're they're moving back. They're they're stopping the development of the six person module, and they're trying to keep the weight down. It's just they're slowing everything. Well, I wouldn't say they're slowing everything down, but they're definitely pulling back the reins on a lot well, of these and, things. And they're narrowing their focus a little bit, which is a good thing. You right. know, you, you need to be a little bit laser focused, like we were back in the Apollo era. We were going to the moon. We were laser focused right. on figuring out what it would take to go to the moon. Right. And right now we're kind of like scatter laser focused. It's like. You know, let's do this, let's do that, let's do this. Oh, and you have no budget to do it with. Uh, so, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, go. and go! So there's that. Uh, I am starting to think there is a possibility that privatized space travel, and, and I'm sure a lot of people in the room will agree, but a privatized space travel will make it back to the moon before NASA does. Now, having said that, I don't know of anyone that's actually working to make it happen, so maybe, maybe that won't happen, but, you know... Whatever there. Can someone in the chat room, by the way, uh, someone brought up COTS. Um, I would like to know what the, I, I know the Dragon module, when it's human rated, how many humans can it bring up? Is it two or three? I don't think it's four, is it? Does anyone know in the chat room how, in the Dragon module, for those of you wondering, uh, that is the crew capsule and the cargo capsule, I mm -hmm. suppose, for the SpaceX vehicle yes. that sits atop the Falcon 9. It's a little bit smaller than the Orion. Uh, seven people on Dragon? <laughs> Really? Ah, really? So, well, three people. Oh, no. Two people said seven. <laughs> I thought it was like three or four. So even in... <laughs> I'm just going to move on. Is, is that like four pregnant women and another guy? <laughs> so privatized space travel is about to smack guy? NASA. <laughs> That's going to be... Now, in all fairness, Dragon is not human rated yet. They're still building the thing. They're still making it. Seven. NASA can't <laughs> even do six. Jeez. Issa moves forward with Vega. Right. Your story now. Which, oh, thanks. Which is kind of 
ESA's version of what NASA's newest version of Apollo is. <laughs> Whoa! Care to try again? Well, like, if you want to look at it, you know, Orion, is there's like Apollo and Orion. I mean, they're kind of the same thing, which I know they're not, but they're kind Apollo of. Apollo and Constellation. Orion is just the crew capsule. Okay. Well, all right. So, all right. Apollo, Constellation. <laughs> yep. And then Falcon 9, Dragon. Yep. And they don't really have a title for that whole thing, do they? Other than, like, Mythical Creatures? That's what I'm saying. The Mythical Creature Program? All right. So, what was the capsule in Apollo called? Uh, it was the... <laughs> Dead air. Okay. So, Help! <laughs> wow. Anyhow. The true service module? So, ESA's the CSM. Okay. So, the CSM is like Orion, as is Dragon is to Vega, is my understanding. Or is Vega the just the rocket part? See? Now you guys have got me all screwed up. But, oh, it must, it must not be the car cargo. <sighs> Care to try again? What was this? You came up with this story. I didn't even read it. What I are we know, looking at I'm here? I'm sorry. So the they did a test fire. It looked really cool. They were really proud of themselves. It's actually a small vehicle, so I don't know. The, the, this is a smaller vehicle. This isn't a big vehicle at all. Really? Yeah, that's not big. All right. So Apparently that's, I don't know anything. That's a small vehicle. Awesome. Uh, yes, a Pontiac. It's Europe's new small launch vehicle. And... They pretty much disrupted everything at uh, 3.30 p.m. The peace and quiet of the coast <laughs> was suddenly interrupted by a powerful deep roar as they, they test. Basically, the story is, the story is they tested their engine. There you go. There's our story. Awesome. <laughs> and space vidcast fail. That's what that was. All right. When we come back, we're going to be talking about STS-125 and whatever we feel like talking about. This is the perfect show to join us live because we're pretty much just going to interact with you and finish out the show talking about topics that you guys think are interesting. So we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome to the Crow River Coffee Company in Watertown, hilarious. Minnesota. Situated on the bank of the beautiful Crow River, we offer espresso drinks, delicious food, live music, bulk beans, and artisan items. You can see us at CrowRiverCoffee.com. Thanks. So in the break, uh, a couple things worth noting. In the break, the chat room said, ha ha, the calendar wasn't changed. Yes, it was. Go back to last week. It was not. Oh, uh, it, was, it was changed. And uh, Astro Brian did bring up a very good point. We forgot to list the premiere of the Star Trek pre prequel in the calendar. That not everyone's excited about. And everyone on the face of the planet is excited about that Star Trek movie. Nope, there are some people who are not happy because there's stuff that goes against canon. 
against can okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm excited. I'm not going to spoil anything. Well, I'm just saying. I'm just saying it's going to be epic. Mm. Massively epic, and I'm excited. I think we should have a just Star Trek geek fest after the movie, like a few hours after the, the first showings and whatnot across the planet. We should just like get together and be like, oh my god, it was so nerdy. It's going to be great. Star Trek tweet up. Star Trek tweet up. You know, one uh, one thing I want to bring up, you know, after you donate and give us, uh, you know, five bucks. Five bucks helps us to go to ISDC and help bring you coverage of the space conference. Really, if you go through the change in your car and in your couch, you'll probably come up to like four seventy. It's one anyway. latte. And speaking of lattes, we do this show live at a coffee shop at the Crow River Coffee Company. And as such, the, and they do it completely for free. They give us a space. They give us the time. Adam directs the show. It's awesome. Uh, and as such, we they're a sponsor of the show. And mm -hmm. uh, we ask that you buy their coffee, too. Because we know that you're going to need coffee. When STS-125 goes up, if, they, if we get even one, hold, 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 we're going to be sitting there watching that thing all night. Hours. Coffee helps. So this month's coffee of the month is... What? <laughs> <laughs> Why are you laughing? Pronounce that. Pronounce that. Seriously. Guatemalan... Wait, <laughs> How do you say it? Calf, how do you say that? Way, way, Tenango. Way, 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 Tenango. Guatemalan, way, way, Tenango. Guatemalan, way, way, Tenango. Guatemalan, way, way, Tenango. See, now everyone can say it. All right, great. So uh, you can grab that <laughs> at CurlRiverCoffee.com. Wow, that I'm never going to remember that. That is going to be awesome every time we bring that up for the next month. I don't <laughs> We're know. Gonna get, you get this mm. little pocket of silence. Thankfully, we only have like two, <laughs> two more shows in the whole month. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Oh Thank man! So definitely do that. And we can I announce what we're gonna do with the coffee thing? Sweet. Uh, so we've got caffeinated because he's brilliant. Is coming out with a space vid cast. Uh, actually, just a rocket-based uh, coffee. It's going to be called a rocket-based coffee. Yeah, exactly. It's <laughs> coffee made with rocket fuel. It is. What's it called? Blast off blend. Blast off blend. Blast off blend. That's right. You can buy blast off blend from Crow River Coffee soon, and uh, that's going to be. Awesome tacular. Hopefully, actually, if you could just put a like a pre-order thing up there, that would be cool too. But keep in mind, you guys, when you buy um, the coffee of the month or you buy the blast off blend, mm -hmm. you get one of our stickers with the coffee. Mm -hmm. Which is the the official sticker, not the not right. the Zazzle sticker, the actual sticker that you see. Now y'all are always on the computers. freaking about. You want to? You know, I want a sticker. I want, want a sticker. sticker. That's where they all be. All right. Exactly. You know, STS one twenty five for all the cutbacks NASA is having to do, and, and at this rate, I don't think they're going to be extending the shuttle program at all. <laughs> I, I think Why they're going to be like. I think they're going to be like the moment you know, they can maybe shut they'll it down. Just lobby that out to Congress. No. They'll be like, look, we're cutting back here. We're cutting back here. So we're just going to take the shuttle and keep it going. No, because. To no, because like you said, they need to laser just, focus. You know, they want to laser like focus. No, no, no. Kind of like they do with like referendums for the school. Yeah, just slide it in. Like you get the really, really needed books and that big football stadium that nobody <laughs> wants. <laughs> exactly. Laser focus, NASA. Laser focus on Constellation. That's what they need to do. And if they want to get anything done, which means I think they're going to, I think the shuttle program is going to be done when they say it's done. But... Uh, did we really get money for space, space transportation system? Did they get Jeff? Did they get money for space transportation system to extend additional missions, or did they just get money for space transportation system in general to fix things like oh, I don't know, the radiator? <laughs> well, and also keep in mind, a lot of people think that it's it's sort of like a transaction where Congress is like, all right, here you go, here's your little briefcase <laughs> of money, go and you know do everything you said you were going to do with it. No, no, no. Congress writes down, they're like, this twenty dollars is supposed to go to this, and this you know three thousand dollars is supposed to go to this, and you can't start swipping, swapping stuff around. Right, Astro Brian. That's what I thought. They didn't give them money for new flights past 2010. They gave them money for existing flights should those flights go into 2010. Right. So that's that's the key here. They have not extended the shuttle program. The shuttle is still going to die, not, not die, but it's going to end when it ends on the last mission. Now, last mission is supposed to be in 2010, but there's of course, I mean, these things get delayed. Heck, STS-125 is supposed to be launched like 2,480 years ago. Something like that. So speaking of STS-125, this is the final servicing mission to the Hubble Space Telescope. Wow, and they actually that built... that sounds so familiar. <laughs> no kidding. They actually built a really cool video. And so we're going to roll that Hubble video right now because I think it's awesome. Awesome. So here you guys go. Here's the HST SM4 video. <laughs>
it's our last shot. It's the, the fifth and final time. It's our last shot to extend Hubble's life and bring it to the apex of its scientific capability. And we just have lots of things we want to repair on Hubble and upgrade on Hubble and not a lot of time to do it. And we're going to take up everything we can take up. And on this flight, it's about 23,000 pounds of hardware. This is going to be a very exciting, complicated, and challenging mission. We have seven brave astronauts who've made a conscious decision to risk their lives in order to continue the advancement of science that Hubble has begun. They're going to buy another five, perhaps ten more years of lifetime for this great telescope. We've got a full plate of things to do. We've got major science upgrades that we're going to do, so we have two new science instruments that we're going to install. We're going to put in the cosmic origin spectrograph. And this is you know, the, the fanciest spectrograph that's ever been put into Hubble. COST plus Hubble together will be able to observe deeper across the universe than any other instrument of this kind has ever done before. Well, we're going to install the Wide Field Camera 3, Hubble's new imager. Wide Field Camera 3's discovery factor is about 10 times better than the current instruments that we have on Hubble. One of the beautiful things about our new camera, the Wide Field Camera 3, is it will be capable of looking farther out across the universe and farther back in time and closer to the Big Bang than any other camera we've ever had on Hubble before. We're also going to attempt two repairs of the two failed instruments on board Hubble, the Advanced Camera for Surveys and STIS. ACS was inserted on Hubble in 2002. Before it died, it was the most heavily used instrument on Hubble. And this was our first black hole hunter. And it went on to do the first detection and chemical analysis of the atmosphere of a planet around another star. We want to keep on doing that kind of work when this comes back online. And this will be the first time that we've ever done an in situ repair of science instruments. So this will be a big challenge. In fact, there's 110 of these very small screws that we need to remove from the instrument in order to gain access to the board we need to replace. And in space, things float, and debris is a real issue. If we're successful in repairing these two scientific instruments that have failed, it will be a real triumph for NASA engineering, and will point the way toward our ability in the future to repair instruments in space. We want Hubble to, to last a while longer as a, as a spacecraft. And since this will be our last opportunity to go service it, we're going to do things like uh, change out all the gyroscopes that help Hubble point. We're going to put in a new fine guidance sensor. I say a new fine guidance sensor. In fact, it's a refurbished fine guidance sensor. It's one that's been on Hubble before and been brought back to Earth, uh, refurbished it. So it's a, a used fine guidance sensor, but uh, first class. We're going to change out our batteries. Uh, never put in new batteries since Hubble was launched. We have some insulation repair work that needs to be done. We're going to install a new outer blanket layer called a noble, which is a solid. It's not a, a blanket anymore. It's a solid um, sheet that will go over the blanket. And uh, we'll also be installing a soft capture mechanism on the AF bulkhead of Hubble that will help facilitate a future mission to Hubble, uh, primarily for the purpose of deorbiting it uh, at the end of its useful life. The two repaired scientific instruments working in tandem with the two new instruments that we're going to put on board Hubble in this mission will enable scientists to tackle some of the most profound issues facing modern science, not just astronomy, but physics today. This, in my mind, means that when the astronauts leave Hubble after servicing mission four, it will be at the absolute apex of its capabilities. Will be better than it's ever been before. And mics. And mics are epic. That was an epic video. I, I just had, I realized it was a little bit long, but I had to show that video. I just think it was awesome. There were a lot of questions that were brought up during the video in the chat room. Let's try to answer a few of them right now, which was, why don't they just drag? Because there's a space debris problem, right? There's right. a lot of debris up there. Right. And that debris is traveling at in excess of 17,000 miles per hour, right. possibly in the opposite direction that you're traveling at 17,000 miles an hour. No. 
that's a 30 plus thousand mile an hour collision. Even something this big, you're gonna rip right through that thing, yeah. right? Very, very bad. So uh, why don't they just drag Hubble up into a higher orbit mm -hmm. so that it doesn't have to deal with the debris? The problem is the Hubble is pretty much essentially at the highest orbit in which the space shuttle can go. That's as far out as it can go. When the space shuttle arrives at Hubble, they'll already be at around 50 to 49 percent fuel reserves. They're just That's how much fuel it's going to take to burn to get there. Right. So they, um, yeah, they can't, they can't drag it much higher. That's, Hubble is where well, it is. Well, they can if it's a suicide mission. Yeah, or without the space shuttle. I mean, they right. could use a different unmanned vehicle, potentially, to dock to it and then push it up. But uh, I, don't, I don't know of any missions to do that. I, I don't see any time to do that. And keep in mind that the Hubble has been around for a while. It is going to be replaced with, by the James Webb Space Telescope in... How, however long it takes NASA to get back into okay. orbit again. So, but the, we've got the James Webb Space Telescope, you know, pretty much ready to go. So we'll just decommission Hubble and bring up JWST. Uh, there, the range in which J, JWST can work is a little bit better. I mean, it's it's a 10, 15 year newer right. telescope. So it's just it's better at what it does better, in better. most aspects. I don't remember uh, what the visual range is. I, I thought there was one section that Hubble was a little bit better at, but. You know, that's, um, yeah, so that, you know, that's what's going on with uh, all of that fun jazz. What other questions did you guys have about Hubble that I missed? Um, JWST is infrared. Okay, that's what I thought. Thank you, Rob. Uh, Uncle BS asked if the space debris will stay in geosynchronous orbit or does it move faster than the satellites in other orbits in space? Well, there is really very, 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 very little resistance in space. It's like one hydrogen particle per meter, something like that. Someone help me out with that. I don't remember what the exact, there's stuff in space, but it's really far apart. So there's really not a whole lot of resistance there for it to slow down. Right. So it's just going to keep spinning around. But the, Earth, the Earth's gravity, as well as the, the lunar gravity, if it mm -hmm. gets by the moon, but the Earth's gravity is going to start slowly pulling it back down into Earth. So if something exploded above the Hubble, mm -hmm. then those particles will eventually, over time, fly pretty much into the Hubble and Bad, bad things happen. So that's... At very high speeds. Right. Now, oh, they're also mentioning J JWST is, is infrared. It's not infrared only, though, Ron. I thought it actually did do a visible range as well. I thought it, it had a really large range of light that it did, including infrared. I don't think it's just infrared, if I remember correctly. I don't remember. I don't remember off the top of my head either. I probably should have brought that up. Another fail on my part at this point. So... Uh, there yeah. you go. So those, any other questions on that or are we going to wrap up this show by talking about STS-125 and Hubble and it's going to be, it's going to be awesomely epic. It's, what's fun, actually the video will almost be more interesting than watching the spacewalks themselves, unfortunately. But I think this, I think the EVAs are fun and interesting because when you think about it, they're in a personal life craft that is designed to work in the harshest environment humans have ever known. Mm -hmm. and it's basically their own personal spaceship that yeah. they're sitting inside of. And it's really cool. And when we look at what they're doing and just how hard it's got to be to move those gloves. And, you know, every action they have to take has to be calculated. And you just can't, you can't move something and expect it not to just start going away. Right, and everything right. they do is very complicated. So I find it to be incredibly interesting. But a lot of people are just, you know, you hear, good calm. Good calm. Good calm. Over and over and over again, they get... <laughs> They get moderately, bar you know, uh, they get moderately bored. Uh, Joe Pilot, on a completely different topic, by the way, asked if the Tranquility Base should be made a protected site so that private rovers can't ruin it, which is an interesting, that, being that Google Lunar X Prize is in the room, it's a very interesting question because one of the um, additional uh, purses in the GLXP competition mm -hmm. is if you're able to go to the moon and find one of the original Apollo artifacts, I guess we'll right. call them, right. and, and actually record those. So mm -hmm. if you find, you know, the foot, the historic footprint from Neil Armstrong, that would, I assume that would qualify, or uh, at that point you'd see the, uh, the limb, the bottom part yeah. of the limb, <laughs> you just kind of see some of that stuff. The big thing. Uh, yeah, you have to image the ar artifacts, you have to actually take an image of it. So, but if, if, if the teams are going off to the moon and they're going to go to Tranquility Base, you know, they're going to be driving all over the place. There is absolutely the possibility that they could just drive right over that footprint right. and never notice it. So yeah, you've got this but, you perfect know, footprint sitting in the lunar soil that we could just go right. and plow right over. Well, 
first of all, we've got good pictures of it. Secondly, uh, keep in mind that the people who are participating in the Google Lunar X Prize have a very heavy uh, uh, respect for the moon. I'm not calling I mean, it a lack of respect. I'm just saying they may not even know that they did it. Right, but I'm guessing that these people aren't even going to come close to that. That they're going to be like, look, way over there, that big thing, that's human made. Click and send that off. Could be. I, and I mean, not even go near it. Well, I, I guess, yeah, well, yeah, and GLXP just pretty much backed up that statement as well. I, I guess it also comes down to, you know, if you have to know it in advance, you know, if you accidentally land on something, you, I guess that's an Right, but that's that one point. thing. But, yeah, once you land and you kind of look around and you figure out where you are and stuff like that. I will say, though, that if I personally landed on the moon and I found the lunar rover, I'm going for a ride. I'm going to bring my own Energizer batteries because they just keep going and going and going. I'm going to sit down in that thing and I'm going to I'm going to be like it's going to be awesome. Right. <laughs> I was going to say like the Bridgestone commercial. <laughs> yes. Oh yeah. Jump around. Oh. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh man, wouldn't that be awesome? Uh, I, I actually just want to go there, find it, and bring it home, and be like, "Look what I found! Can I keep it?" <laughs> <laughs> but follow me home, mom. I think it's a good question because. You know, G the GLXP teams, are, that, that's just one competition. I'm not saying they're going to do anything, but, you know, there's always a possibility of an accident. But then we've also got all these other countries, and we're doing these impact tests and all this other fun jazz. Mm -hmm. Should we create, should we make Tranquility Base an internationally considered protected area on the moon? Good question. I don't know. I think that would actually, uh, uh, I think that's a good, good question up for debate. So, all right. Um, I th no, and as GLXP is bringing up, nobody owns the moon. There's an international, there are big treaties that say that no one owns the moon. And I have Neptune, that. though. Uh, you know, I own, <laughs> I own Jupiter. I claim Jupiter. Or, <laughs> or Pluto. Enceladus. Enceladus. All right, I think we're, I think we're winding down. We're going to have one more show before we've got ST, the launch of STS-125. Mm -hmm. And that is going to be covered live right here on spacevidcast.com. And that will be before the International Space Developers Conference. If we are lucky, we will finally get our high-definition dish here at Crow River Coffee Company and be able to bring you high-definition coverage online of STS-125. As far as I know, we will be the only space anything that will bring you HD coverage of the launch. Well, HD being 640 by 360. The original HD is squeezed down, but still the highest quality, lowest latency, most awesome coverage of STS-125. But that requires that we find a six to eight foot C-band dish before the launch date and a good receiver and LMB. So we're trying. We're trying to make it go, oh yeah, we got to pay for that and the ISDC. ISDC. So hit that donate button. Make sure that happens. It, uh, like I said, every dollar counts. Any final comments from you? No, I, I think if I say anything else, I'll just screw it up. So <laughs> right. I'm just not gonna. You can join us every week. It's every Friday at 2 o'clock a.m. Coordinated Universal Time. We'll have one more show before the launch of STS-125 next Friday at 2 o'clock a.m. UTC, or if you're in the United States and can't do time zone conversions, because I know you can't, that would be at 7 o'clock p.m. Pacific Daylight Time, 9 o'clock p.m. Central Daylight Time, or 10 o'clock p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. I kind of messed up in the middle there, but we're going to pretend Meh. we're going to pretend like I didn't. Nobody's in the Central Time Zone anyway. So thank you to Starbucks Diva and to Uncle BS for being our uh, uh, silver and gold sponsors, respectively. We've got another silver sponsor. Do you remember who that uh, is? Wolf Spirit. Wolf Spirit. So Starbucks Diva and Wolf Spirit are silver sponsors. Silver means that they donate uh, $10 a month, I think it is. Actually, if you go to spacevidcast.com slash donations, it tells you what each different level is. You have to donate X number of dollars per month, and then you actually become bronze, silver, gold, platinum. And I would love to get, for the first time, I'd love to get an unobtainium sponsor to the show, which is $100 per month recurring. So anyhow, thank you guys for making that happen. You guys are helping make the ISDC dream come true. Thank you all of us for joining us live. Stay around. We're going to have post-show right after this, and we will see the rest of you next week.